Hi, I'm Jan Marie Wise Doyle, and this is Wise Talk. I'm so excited about today's guest. She's talented, she's creative, she's artistic, she's friendly, and she's generally one of the nicest persons I've ever met in my entire life. And I've known her before the show. And did I mention she is talented? I'd like you to meet Janice Avril. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I am so happy to have you here. You are, I met you through a quilt guild, and you are really, besides being world famous, you're just a nice person. Oh, thank you. Really? Did you know that? I try. You really are. So I'd like to, we had so much to talk about, Janice. You're a quilt artist, and I'd like to get into it, but I'd like to spend a little bit of time, uh, just a couple of minutes, on your journey there. I have in front of me your portfolio, and I understand you started off as a fashion designer, and this is some of the work that you've done. Tell me a little bit about this. Well, I started off sewing garments because that's what my family, that's what I learned. My sisters, my mom sewed garments um, for ourselves. And I picked up sewing, and it was the only way I knew expressing myself with fabric. So I wanted to be a fashion designer, and I applied to FIT, the Fashion Institute of Technology in Manhattan, uh, as a senior in high school. And then I didn't get accepted after the interview. I got accepted the paper uh, acceptance. And uh, that went for uh, another three years. I kept up my college local, went to community college, met my husband meantime. So I guess there was a reason why I didn't mm -hmm. go the first mm -hmm. year. Uh, eventually, I realized that I was never going to get in the door with the interview for fashion design because I'm not very good at drawing, or I wasn't at the time. So I went for pattern making, which didn't require an interview or artistic ability. While I was there, I was doing alterations for teachers in the fashion department, and they asked me what my plans were. When I told them, they said, well, why are you in pattern making? Why aren't you in fashion design? And I said, well, I don't know. You tell me. And they said, well, unfortunately, the school had been focusing too much on art and realized they had brought in too many people that didn't know how to get somebody in and out of these wonderful designs. So wow. that was my, my opportunity. And I went to their one-year program and accelerated an associate's degree. Uh, went fall and the winter, um, and then the spring, very intense, and uh, graduated with an associate's degree in fashion design. And I worked briefly at Warner Co. Oh, my specialty, could you choose a specialty? My specialty was uh, intimate apparel. And I went to work at Warner Co. in Bridgeport before they moved out of Bridgeport. And, uh, and then eventually I went home to a family, raising my family, doing custom clothing, and then I got tired of that. Now, how did we get into quilting? Because that's how I know well, you. Well, I ended up, I was always in the fabric store with all these beautiful cottons, and I, I, they weren't for me to sew, but I just kept seeing them, so I'd buy little bits and buy little bits, and eventually I said, I need to make a quilt, because that's what this stuff's for. Uh, and um, I tipped my toes a little bit in the water. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I just got tired of custom clothing, because everybody has champagne taste and a beer budget. Yep, and, yep. Um, and it wasn't, just didn't feel like I could express myself the way I wanted to, because it was other people's things that they wanted. So I started quilting and I have not looked back. <laughs> well, you, and, and I have to tell you, um, I met you at a guild and I needed some help with making a, uh, actually a design board and I had all the materials and I felt like I had two left thumbs and you said, oh here, let me help you. And I was so surprised at how kind you were. And you just, and I thought I should, you know, no, I got it, I got it. And you just put, you know, pins here, pin staples <laughs> here, stitch, and, you, and you're just so nice. So I'd like to move on to what's behind Thank us. Thank you. you. You really are Thank nice. Thank you. Now, this is a beautiful piece, but before we hit it, it's in this magazine. Tell me a little uh, bit about this magazine. This, this is actually a, a book, a soft cover book put out by AQS Publishing, the American Quilting Society. And it's their annual theme called New Quilts from Old Favorites, and they have a different theme every year. And the theme that year was the Carolina Lily, if you want to show them real quick on the front. These are the lilies. Mm -hmm. And you were supposed to come up with your own interpretation of that traditional block. And my friend Janice Roy, that's also in our guild, uh, who does a lot of my quilting, I asked her if she would be interested in collaborating. And I said, well, you know, it's only two months down the road, so if I come up with an idea and I find the fabric, you on board? She says, yeah, well, fortuitously enough, I came up with an idea and found the fabric. Now, this is just beautiful. So how, does, so how did this quilt come into being? Did you design your own 
quilts? I sketch. I have uh, uh, graph pad sketchbooks. I used to use blank paper sketchbooks, but I find myself lost on this big empty white plane. And if you look at most art, uh, anything that's pattern related, it's based upon a grid. You know, even if you don't see the grid, everything has a structure underneath it. Mm -hmm. open now, I'm, what I'm looking at, now this map is out. I, I, go ahead. This this is something that I saw. Why don't you hold it because it'll okay. be easier. This is a sketch that I did um, oh, right here. This is this quilt right here. So um, here, let me pull this out of the way. So this quilt here, I just, I sit, you're in a doctor's appointment and you got time to kill. So I would bring my sketchbook and my pencil and an eraser. And this block, uh, this quilt I designed was based on a shoe fly block with your four triangles going around a center square, and all I did was shift the value, and it created this whole. So here's four, right here, here's the yep. shoe fly block. Yep. And what do you mean by shifting the values? This would have been here in a traditional shoe fly. This blue would have been here. These would have been white. And so then you just repeated it. And I repeated it, and then I turned every other block, and that's how you get this linking Element. So I just want to repeat a little bit. This is when Janice and I met for our pre-interview at my favorite spot in life, I might add. Um, she showed me her sketchbooks, and I was so intrigued because there's because of how you did it, and because it's graph paper and the blank, and it was just a real education just looking through her sketchbook. And and you say these to go back and refer yeah, to designs? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, there's more ideas in there than I can make in a lifetime, and I save them and I date them. I write the, the year I started it and the year I finish it, put my name on it. But I just, I, if you're ever finding yourself staring at a blank piece of paper and you can't draw something, or, or quilts are always based on a grid, there's symmetry, and it's all right there for you on the graph. And if you photocopy it, the lines disappear. Oh, isn't that interesting? So, I mean, you could sit here. I could. There's a million ideas. Yeah, I, I could sit here and just look, and and then I also could see how calming it could be, mm -hmm. just just doing the process. Yeah, this was before Zentangles. Yes. <laughs> or now, before I, also, I heard of it. I also know that now we're kind of a little out of this. You gotta tell me where that goes. But going back to this, so this you um, created the design. Mm -hmm. And you submitted it. And yes, then it was a finalist, and the finalists all get mailed in, and then they choose the winners, and we didn't win place or show, but we made it in a book. That's cute. And our quilt hung in the museum in Kentucky, the American Quilt Museum, or National Quilt Museum in Kentucky, and uh, they had a reception that, unfortunately, we couldn't attend because that was the same weekend as our quilt show, and Janice and I are both officers and had big duties, so you couldn't go. our guild took uh, priority over anything hanging in a museum in Kentucky. Oh wow! <laughs> so when, what year was this? 2014 wow. was the year it hung. It was the 2014 theme. Now I um, I noticed in my notes you've been published 17 times in six years. Yes, yes. I'm. Excuse pretty... me. Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> oh my God. Now that noise people are hearing, that's my cell phone that I didn't turn off. Oh. But don't tell anybody, okay? <laughs> this will be our secret. So this was the first one, and then this is a variation of the shoe fly. Yes. And then how did this come about? Just doodling in the quilt uh, graph pad and um, the magazines you submit. Uh, pictures of a finished quilt. You can submit sketches. I have Electric Quilt, which is software used for designing quilts, and I usually create in there. I sketch in my sketchbook, come up with a bare bones idea. I work in just two values, white and gray. Then I import it into the computer. This is all on my blog, JaniceAverill.com. Well, that, that's something I would like to repeat a couple of times. You get this. You have a blog with this information. A lot of this information. And spell your last name for me. A-V, as in Victor, E-R-I-L-L. -L. Great. Dot com. Dot com. And Janice, I-C-E, not I-S. Oh, that's a good point. Yes. J-A-N-I-C-E-A-V-E-R-I-L-L.com. -E 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 I went on your blog, and there's a lot of information there. People love that. Yes. How often do you add to your blog? I try to put something in once a month. I'm not an avid blogger. It's uh, very intimidating to me when I start one, but then when I'm finished, I feel really good. <laughs> good, good. And people seem to really appreciate it. Yes, yes. So I usually blog every time 
time something's published. And the reason I've had so many quilts published in the recent years is because I had the email addresses of three different uh, magazine, uh, the, who are the editors, the content editors, and I would email the designs to the first one, and then whatever they rejected, I would immediately email to the next one, and then if they would take one, reject something else, I'd send the rest to the other. I did that one season and had four, four quilts pub out at the same time. Wow. In 2015, or mm -hmm. yeah, 2015. Now this one I want to talk, this is from Easy Quilts. This is Pinto. And this is the picture in the magazine. And whoa, everything's going flying. Oh, sorry. What a gorgeous quilt, Janice. Look at how gorgeous this is. Here's the picture, the directions. And I have to tell you, it doesn't look that easy to me when, it, oh, when I'm looking at it. It's very easy block. This is one block. All you have is a square with a border, and then you make this little element with the triangle with the square, and then this is one block that's basically a diamond and a square with sashing, to, so it's floating away. And I was inspired, I was, it was a sketch, just me doodling in my sketch pad, and the name came about because of The Price is Right has a game called Plinko, yes, where the little yes, tile yes, goes yes. Duka, 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 down the pegs, and when you look at it, it kind of looks like something's yes, going diagonally. Yes, just, yes. tick, 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 tick. Now I have to tell you, I just want to repeat, so you had a sketch, you're doing the sketch, and then you went to a quilt. Then I went to an electronic design program to explore the possibilities. So I start off with, you've got a white piece of paper and just the gray of the pencil. So you only have two values. Mm -hmm. So then when I bring it into the computer, I add maybe a third value or not. And I or rotate it, or you know, change it, or I might see something else that I can grow out of there. But usually, the idea comes out of the sketch pad and goes right into the EQ, and then that ends up being the design. You know, while you were talking, <clears throat> what occurred to me is there's people have an image of a quilter, a little old lady sitting mm -hmm. in her chair with the needle going up and down, you know, it may be butter churning on the left of her, you know. Well, I wasn't in the mosh pit, but I was at the Hate Breed show on last Saturday night. <laughs> really? Yeah. Just saying. So, now, but the, you're, when, you, when quilters nowadays use computers all the time, Oh, yes, and it's the easiest way to, and, and also to educate yourself and to expand yourself as a quilter and not have to use up your precious fabric because there's a million JPEGs of fabric that come in the program and they're always offering you more for free. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and you can go to websites now for fabric companies and you can download their JPEGs for their collections and then import it into electric quilt and do whatever you want with it. Now, I need to move on. So you okay. did it, but you did now, do you? That's called piecing. Do you actually do the quilting part? I I don't do it on my quilts because I want it to look perfect, and I can't do it that good. So mm -hmm. I pay a professional to do it. But for this one, I handed the woman who did it a sketch of what I wanted, and it included this spine with feathers going in and feathers going out, and then she interpreted it in a way that the quilter could actually do it and not the way I sketched it but it was similar to this. Wow beautiful 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 work so now when I look at this I have another um, this is the one we talked this, this was the one on the right it's from McCall's quilt Quilt, I'm not saying this. Quilt, quick quilt. Quick quilt. I called it candy wrapper. It looks like candy wrappers. It does look like candy they wrappers. They named it Sweet Shop, which is fine with me, and what a gorgeous glamour shop. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty yes. exciting when they come in the mail. Yes, 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 <laughs> it yes. It doesn't get old. It, I, it wouldn't get old for no, me. No, it doesn't get old. As I told, and um, then that one we looked at Plinko. I, as I told the um, Mike, the uh, director, I want to grow up and be just like you. <laughs> I'm just saying. There's a lot of people I want to grow up to be too. Oh, so now it's an inspiration. Well, before we go to this, I want to go to the JPEGs. Okay. So the first JPEG that Mike's going to put on the uh, monitor for us to, and will be on the TV screen is it's going to be a picture of what for us. I, I oh, this to, is yes. a quote. This is when I first started to understand value and play with value or try to understand value because I never completely well. There's a wonderful book called Circle Play. I can't remember the woman's name, but if you Google Circle Play, mm -hmm. it's an excellent book. It's two, it's a giant half square triangle. You find some gorgeous print and you work with the print in the middle of these half square triangles and you play with the print on the alignment of that, that diagonal. And then after you do that, you lay them out and you try to play with the value to get like runs, 
running waves of valleys. So this one has kind of like a diagonal aspect to it because of that. And Very that was nice. one of my early, that I quilted myself because it's just channel quilting. I can handle that. Yeah, I can handle channel yeah, quilting. Yeah, I can too. handle that. Yeah, very, very nice. So the next uh, picture, JPEG, is also uh, circles. Okay, this is a smaller one. This is uh, Dragon Garden, and it, uh, it was only nine little blocks because the print was smaller, and I didn't have as... And, and the other thing that's nice about this circle playbook is it helps you to expand the values in your stash because you have to go out and buy fabric to work with it because you nothing can you real you realize that everything you have is the same value because now what do you mean by value light and dark so and I know when I go out I love to go to quilt shots I love to go out and just touch fabric I love to go out bring it home mm -hmm. look at it but we all tend to buy what we love and what's the problem with that we well we tend to buy our favorite color in a medium value is what I've read in a million color books. The first thing they'll say is, look at your stash. You'll have your me your favorite color in a medium value. And I said, oh, would you look at that? They were right. <laughs> and, um, and even after all these years, I still have to stop myself. So whenever I go shop hopping, I try to buy four different half yard pieces and have them be different values and texture. When you say value, light? Light, medium, dark. And very dark? Or yes. Very light? Yeah, and very, very light. All as many so values. So if I was as gonna talk find. about values here, what this is the dark. This would be a dark. What would be this the this would be the light because it pops against the guy that's next to it. Okay. But I'm not that good with value. I use the little red and green acrylic uh, I, value yes, finders yes, too. Yes. And also if you take now we live in the digital age. You can use your, um, if you don't have those, use your cell phone and you just put it in black and white mode. A lady told me this and I didn't figure this out on my own. A woman suggested it to me in a fabric store. She said she does it all the time. She just puts it in black and white mode and uses the little viewfinder to check her values because sometimes you love a fabric so much that you won't admit to yourself it's the wrong value. Because I love it. That's, I <laughs> and love that's that the fabric. thing. That's the problem. So, uh, so you have dark, light, a medium. Me What's I mean, this? This would be in the light, but okay. a little bit of a darker, uh, you know, but still lighter than that because these are what pops. But the other reason this pops is because blues are considered cool fabrics and orange and reds are warm fabrics and warms jump out at you traditionally. You can make color do anything you want by putting it next to something else. Yes, yes. You really can't. So there's no hard and fast rules about light being forward and dark being back or dark being forward and light being back. It's all how we perceive it, and that's why I highly recommend uh, utilizing digital gray scale technology to bring your pictures into you know, any photo program and just turn them into black and whites and you will see where your ideas might be a little off. Yes. And then the last thing I want to say about fabric and picking a fabric out for a quilt is when you think you're done and you say to yourself, yeah, those work. They're not really working. You just don't want to go to the fabric store and look for a better fabric. So unless you look at them and you say, I've been to every fabric store and these are the best fabrics out there and they are going to make the most awesome quilt because I've got light lights and dark darks and everything's going to pop bright because I found that most of my quilts that are failures, there's one like one little thing of value that didn't do what it's supposed to do. It's because that was the one where I said, well, that, that looks good. <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe you just said that. Because oh, I do it I, all the time. I, I, I've done that. Oh, that's good enough. And that's it. Unless you're like looking at that and you're like, yeah, then go buy another piece of fabric. Keep looking. There are a million fabric stores in Connecticut. People just don't realize how many there are. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Now, I, we have two more JPEGs. I want to go back to the slides. One is, it's called Seminal or... This oh, is a fractal. Uh, fractals. Fractal. I, um, I got, I've been interested in fractals because they have to do with the golden mean and the golden ratio. And I read up on all that stuff. And then I took an online class that was designed relating to fractals and expanding your ideas of design. And one of the suggestions was a program called Chaos, X-A-O-S, Chaos, and it's free program that designs fractals. F R A C T A L is a fractal. And it generates fractals. They're random things, but they're basically you're looking at an element, and as you look, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and it repeats itself. And the reason that they give you something like that in a design class to play with is because you learn about composition 
without realizing it because you're zooming and traveling through this fractal and all of a sudden you stop and you say, wow, I really like the way that looks. Well, why do you like the way that looks? Is it because of the diagonal that's flowing through the thing? Is there some repeated thing? You start to analyze it and it makes you a better artist. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, and I didn't figure that out on my own. I took a lot of art classes. That is interesting. <laughs> so, I, so the next picture is a fractal also when, we, when it comes up. Um, you look like a queen there. There we go. <laughs> yeah, this is one of my favorites, this guy right here. So those little po uh, triangles, there's little um, variables that you can tweak in the program, and they'll change to something with a more softer edge and not be these hard little triangles. There's a million. You can change the color. There's not a lot that you can control color-wise pre-planned -pre that I figured out. It's kind of random, but I have fun with it. And then I save the ones I like, and I write down what I did so mm -hmm. that if I want to do something similar again, I know. You can do it. Well, it that's, right down. that's one of the things I've learned because you go and do something, and you want to figure out how you did it later, and you can't remember. I write everything down, and that started when I used to do alterations, and I would take apart somebody's jacket, and I had to put that back together again. <laughs> yeah, your, your rep is on the line. Now, yes. you have, is there two more in here, two more JPEGs? The There's the two seminal quotes. Those were the first. Um, okay, oh, this is the that's seminal. That's an excellent quote to make to understand and learn about color and value and how they relate to your visual. Um, okay, then we're going to go on to the next thing. one because we're running out of time. Yes. And then, so that was another one. That one is uh, brighter, and it's trickier to work because you were, well, both of them were tricky because this one's all bright colors, and the other one was all earth tones. So it, it kind of. You know, I think it's interesting how one is attracted to one color wave as opposed, like this one really attracts that's me. That's my pick. The other one was somebody's baby quilt, and they picked the colors. Oh, because yeah. I love the colors earth in that. Tone, the earth love. tone. Now, and it was that hard? To, was that true? That was pattern? really hard to work with because they were all so bright to try and, and that one involved text more than actual color that you see. It related to the texture and how your eyes perceive the value. So that's why that one was really hard. So if you, oh, it's fine. How long does it take you to do a particular quilt, usually as general, in general? This took no time at all because it was very, very simple. This one was a direct from God, so it didn't, it wasn't too bad, and it involved a lot of just drafting, so that was real easy. And um, Now just, this we have on the table. This one was, now inspiration comes from all kinds of really weird places. Okay. Do not shut yourself off. Are you hearing that? Do not Jesus. shut yourself off. Do not shut yourself open off. Open yourself up. Look, We're take open. the earbuds out. Open up your eyes and look around and listen. So what was your inspiration for I was for wiping this? my feet on somebody's doorstep. You ever see the doormats that are the little linked yes. recycled Let rubber? Just, yes. And there's the pins that go through them. Pull this up a and they're bit. and they um, there's pins and they're wow. hinged on each other. So when I initially designed it, they were all going the same way. So it looked like the doormat. And then I rotated every other block to just give it a little bit of. Wow. But you can make yours all straight. It looks cool that way too. This mm -hmm. looks very cool. But you said there's something on the back. Oh, you want so to show. now this is my favorite thing about this quilt. Is that, Don't go too far because okay. you're your mic. Um, when you have a big, beautiful piece of fabric that you bought, I call them your one night stands. <laughs> You know, you walk in a fabric store and you're just like, oh my gosh. Oh my God, I love that. I love it. I gotta have it. I gotta have it. And it's a big giant print and you've got one yard and you don't know what to do with it. Go get another piece of fabric, sash it out all around wider than, you know, the top because the long armor needs a big back. And then you give it to the long armor and you've got a groovy back on your quilt. And you have a one night stand that will be there forever. Ever. Exactly. Is, that is so cute. Yeah. Now, I, is this in one of your magazines? Yes, that's in that one right there. Okay, so this this magazine. I named it Doormat because I have no imagination. They that, renamed it Nutmeg and Cinnamon. <laughs> well, I, I like it. Uh, but this is in the magazine McCall's Quilting. Oh, notice the best of American quilting. <laughs> and Janice is right here. And oh, here it is. So. And here it is in here. Very, very nice. Now, you're noticing that you t you put a label on them. Why do uh, you do that? Oh, uh, well, you should always put a label on your quilt because uh, it's not always going to be let me, let me, a part of your family. Let me just hold <clears> this you up. You can't depend on something staying in your family. It's like old pictures. You sit there and you say, who is that person? Grandma's not alive to tell us. So it would right, be nice if right. they wrote it on it. So what I do is I make them in my electric quilt program, just like as if I was making an applique quilt, but I just use the features. And I always use one block 
from the quilt and I put it on the label and I import the fabrics from the quilt into it. So it, that is printed. This is printed. Oh, you're talking. I'm, I'm just sitting here looking at it like I forgot all about you guys yes. out there. So this is printed, this little block to look like one of the blocks in the quilt. Wow, let me just get a little bit over here. Yeah, this so one this, has is, it too. this is so interesting. There's and one on this one too. This is so interesting. She has designed in piece by Janice Averill. What was your um, blog again? JaniceAverill.com. And how do you spell your Janice? J A N I C E. Not a like Janice Joplin. Okay. And Averill? A V E R I L L. It's like French April, but with extra consonants. Good to know. <laughs> so now this one, she tells who did the quilting of the piece, the year, and it says for McCall, McCall's Quilts, July and August 2015. Very, very. And you know what? You have a really good point. You want to know this information in 100, 200 years. It's been years. drilled into me in the magazines. Yes. <laughs> You want to know this. Now, we have over here, we're almost out of time. We don't have very much time left. But I want to talk about this 100 blocks. Oh, I just took the That's there. okay. I know what page it's on. So, Quilt Maker Magazine uh, has people submit block ideas. I think they do it two or three times a year. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, I, it's not, I'm not compensated, but I get free advertising. I think that's the point of it. Yeah. So, this block is a Carolina Lily, which is similar to what's used in here. And typically, a Carolina Lily is an on-point block. Where's that book? We hold that up for a quick minute. An on-point block such as shown in here. Okay. So we were designing our raffle quilt, and we wanted to have a central motif and then have the four, because it was an on-point setting, and then have the four blocks around it point into it to give it a central feel and not just a Baltimore album-y kind of a feel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I, I mean, anybody can do it. You basically put four triangles around the block and tilt it, but also I went and figured out how to foundation pieces so there's no Y seams. Wow. Mm -hmm. This is really incredible. And so we're just about out of time. And if you have any questions that you'd like me to direct to Janice, you can always contact me at jmdteach at comcast.net. Or you can always contact the studio, uh, BCTV. Or you can contact Janice directly yep. on her blog and your website. What is that? www.janiceaverill.com. Good. And I just have to say, we talked about this before the show, but this is such a perfect quilt to be sitting <laughs> into. It's like, she's like the queen there. They're like here. a peacock. Like a peacock. So thank you so much thank for coming. You. You're extraordinarily talented. Thank you so much. Thank it's you. It's fun to finally find something that I feel I can express myself and, and feel fulfilled. And yes, and be 100% successful. Wow. <laughs> really? It's not feeding the family, but it's feeding my habit. Yes, yes. <laughs> so this is wonderful. So we'll just, while they, while they run the credits, we'll just sort of look at some of these. These are absolutely amazing. So this is Plinko, um, the original designer.